Eretzes. Veratats Haidenik. It means to return to the fatherland, to Armenia. This was my first extended trip to Armenia as a member of the Knights of Vartan. I had been looking forward to this visit for two years. My first journey to Armenia was a decade earlier, in June of 2011. My entire family came along. It would be the only time that we would all be in Armenia together. Now, in September of 2021, I was representing Ararat Talij No. 1 in Boston. This was a chance to see for myself, along with my fellow knights and daughters of Vartan, just where and how our efforts have made life better for our brothers and sisters in the homeland. To see the projects, and most important, to meet the people whom we have worked with and worked for. I'm Asped David Medzorian, and I'd like to share my memories and experiences of Veratat's Heidenik 5 with you in this, our second Talking Vartan video podcast direct from Armenia. Here is part two of my Diary from the Motherland, Veratat's Heidenik 5. Welcome. I had been in Armenia since the 4th of September. After acclimating myself to the local time and overcoming my jet lag, I was off to Bert and Tavush province for six days. I was back in Yerevan just a few days before the Veratats Haidenik was to begin. The city was preparing for the Independence Day celebration the following week, and so the colored fountains in Republic Square were nowhere to be seen. Stages were being set up and scaffolding was being erected for the giant television screens as well as platforms for the television cameras that would beam the festivities into living rooms across the country and stream them around the world. Yerevan is fun. There is no doubt about it. I was staying at the beautiful Marriott Hotel in Republic Square, where the Knights of Vartan has its communications office. As for me, I spent those few days before the visit officially began getting to know Yerevan. I found out very quickly that Yerevan is not a morning city. Yerevan, like many European cities, really comes alive at night. People stay up late here. Restaurants are full and the sidewalks are filled with people and their children enjoying the warm early autumn weather. Seeing the sights of Yerevan at night was so much fun. So was enjoying a fine meal at Sherep, walking past the fountains, discovering underground shopping centers, dining on rabbit, quail eggs, and sushi for the very first time, enjoying a late night strawberry milkshake on Northern Avenue, something I did several times, and running up the steps to the very top of the Cascade. I did that on my first day much to the surprise of my cousin who watched from the bottom. I visited museums in honor of Sergei Parajanov and Yervan Kochar, both of which I enjoyed tremendously. Each day I walked for miles, soaking up the essence of Armenia's capital city. Were there challenges? Absolutely. Of course, there was the fact that I couldn't speak Armenian fluently, and I won't even tell you how much time I spent looking for certain places like the local dry cleaner, before I finally called an acquaintance out of frustration saying, this can't be this complicated. It wasn't. When I wasn't out sightseeing or searching for a place to clean my clothes, I set up shop here at the Marriott's Outdoor Cafe. Now let me tell you, having your laptop in front of you with a pastry and an Armenian coffee while hearing the sounds of the city all around you, well, if I have to work, this is the way to do it. Pretty soon, I began seeing some familiar faces. In addition to our liaison, Kohar Palian, I saw Sparabed Dikran Sahakian from New York, who helped to plan the Vera Tats Haidenik. And then, from California, Avak Sparabed Stephen Adams and his wife, Nachkin Dirui Salpi Adams. We 
We all sat down together for the first time as a group at Saturday morning's orientation at the Marriott. After the initial greetings by Avak Spadabed, Liaison Kohar, and Spadabed Tikran, we all had the opportunity to introduce ourselves. Liaison Kohar and Spadabed Tikran went over the schedule for the next nine days and we were then ready to go. And what better way to begin a Knights and Daughters of Vartan visit to Armenia than with a relaxing cruise on the homeland's largest and best known body of water, called the Jewel of Armenia, Lake Sevan, and the mountains surrounding it have been portrayed in countless paintings and photographs. I first came here 10 years ago, but stayed on shore. I stopped by the shoreline on my way to Tavush on this trip, but only long enough to snap a few photos. To see and feel Sevan's incredible beauty and serenity while floating upon its waves is a very moving experience. Both before and after our lunch at sea, we walked around the deck of our ship, pointing out the sights on shore, snapping photographs, and expressing our joy at finally all being together in this beautiful land called Armenia. Once on shore, many of us walked up the long stairway to the remnants of the Sevanavank Monastery. We marveled at the beauty of the two ancient churches that overlook Lake Sevan, Sup Arakelots and Sup Asvazatsi. They are there, standing like two guards over this ancient lake. The view from the summit, it is incredible. A perfect photographic backdrop. From the panoramic vista that is Lake Sevan to the Parvana in Yerevan, our first day together would end with a party. Want a recipe for a good time? Bring both old and new friends together. Let them enjoy an incredible meal. Let the house band play some great music and get up on the dance floor, which we did. Vera Tats Heidenik 5 was underway and an exciting and inspiring week lay ahead. Sunday was a day of worship and reflection. Our group began the day at St. Herdipsimet Church, where we visited the grave of the martyr who died for her belief in Christianity. From there, we passed by the Mother Sea of Etchmiadzin, whose doors were closed due to extensive renovations. A short distance from there was the St. Gayaneb Monastery, where Holy Badarak was being celebrated this morning. The church was filled to capacity, as the organist and choir serenaded us with the Blessed Sharagans, heralding the entrance of His Holiness, Catholicos Karekin II. Avak Sparebed Steve and Nachkin Didui Salpi stepped forward to receive the blessing of His Holiness as he moved slowly through the church. We enjoyed lunch that day at the Machinens House, a cultural center and restaurant located just a short distance from Holy Etchmiadzin. And when I say culture, I mean real culture. The facility offers master classes in both cooking and theater. Before we sat down to our meal, Avak Spadabed Steve and I watched some experts demonstrate the proper way to make lavash. And yes, they gave us some hot out of the oven. And yes, it was delicious. Spadabed Tikran Sahakian provided some after meal entertainment at the piano with a few measures of Queen's Bohemian Rhapsody. With our bellies full, it was time to walk off some of that incredible meal, and our trek began with a return to Holy Etchmiadzin, where we strolled around its impressive and inspiring grounds, took a few photos, and learned more about where we were from our Arvak Spadabed. Another short walk took us to the museums at Etchmiadzin, 
containing more than 5,000 exhibits which focus on Armenia's religious and cultural past. Some of the exhibits are truly remarkable, such as this spear point or Gekhart, which may have been used to pierce the side of Jesus following his crucifixion. There are other artifacts that may contain a piece or pieces of the original cross upon which Jesus was put to death. There are other religious symbols as well, some dating back more than 2,000 years. Hotchkars, paintings, manuscripts, ancient Bibles, and so much more. A time capsule of who we were and how we became who we are. Following our guided tour, we spent time strolling through the art gallery, marveling at some impressive works by artists from around the globe. We also met India's ambassador to Armenia, K.D. Duval, and his family. Our trip through Armenia's past continued at the ruins of Zvartnots Cathedral, built in the 7th century at the order of Catholicos Nerses the Builder. The structure stood for nearly 300 years before it collapsed, most likely the result of an earthquake. It is still an impressive sight and a fine backdrop for photos and videos, even from the sky. While we were there, a crew was on hand to photograph a wedding couple. The bride's wedding train, or pesh, was giving her a little bit of trouble. Nachkin Didui Salpi Adams and Anna Zudenko went to her rescue, giving this wedding shoot a happy ending. Our day ended at the theater, the Peronian Theater, where we saw a production of Three Apples Fell from the Sky, performed entirely by a talented cast from Artsakh. On Monday, the destination was Tavush, a province along Armenia's northeast border, where I had visited only days before. The inspiring 13th century architecture of the Hagartzin Monastery near Dilijan was our first stop of the day. Built between the 7th and 13th centuries, it includes three churches, the Church of the Holy Mother of God, Surp Krikor, and Surp Stepan. The interiors, simple but inspiring with domes that let in the light, an invitation to anyone to come and to pray. Behind the churches, an old walnut tree. Legend says that if you pass through the trunk of the tree with a dream in your thoughts, the dream will come true. I figured, what could I lose? So I took that dream of mine and went through. Still waiting, but I'm hopeful. After church, we went to school, to the Tavush Village School. Our own Sparabed Tikran Sahakian sponsors the school's after-school program. He, Avak Sparabed Steve, and others participated in the welcome ceremony of bread and salt. Our friend, Der Aram Mizorian of Supovanes Church in Bert, welcomed us to the school and then introduced us to the students. The children began their program with a series of dramatic recitations. Then the music played, and the students entertained us with a trio of traditional Armenian dances. For me, the high point of the visit was when Der Aram introduced, from his church, the Medzorian Children's Choir. They were named in honor of my parents, Nachkin Spadabed Jack Medzorian and Nachkin Didoui Eva Medzorian. They had a chance to see and hear the choir perform during their last visit together to Armenia just a few years ago. It is hard for me to describe what it meant to be there, representing my family and listening to these dedicated and talented young singers. Thank you, dear Aram, for bringing them to this school for us to see and hear. 
I will always treasure this experience and the singers who made it possible. Following a brief look around the school, we were off once again, this time for an outdoor luncheon at what is known as the Parents' Spring Gathering Place. Dear Adam led us all in prayer before we sat down to an incredible meal of grilled meats and vegetables. For the second time this day, I felt a huge lump in my throat when Spotabed Tikran Sahakian toasted my father and mother for their contributions to the knights and daughters of Vartan and the people of Tavush. Thank you, Spadabed Dikran. There were many other toasts as well, for as I found out myself during my recent visit to the region, Tavush and its people stay with you long after you leave. When you spend time there, it's like being a member of an extended family. Many of our fellow knights and daughters have been to Tavush and they know this feeling, which is why we have given our support to so many projects in this region. The Igedzor School was our next stop, and what a welcome there was. Students lined up outside the school and both cheered and applauded as we approached them. Their applause was particularly enthusiastic for Spadapet Tikran, for his generosity and continued support of the school. After a welcoming ceremony and some words of welcome from the school's principal, there were words of inspiration from some of the older students. The dancing shoes were on after that, and what a great job the students did. So great, in fact, that even some of our adults decided to join them. Soon, everyone was dancing. And even when the dancing stopped, the music continued, as the talented students serenaded us with beautiful, touching melodies. Speaking in Armenian, Nakin Didui Salpi Adams thanked the students and faculty for their welcome and their performances, and added, we look forward to coming back here and seeing you all again. Before heading back to Yerevan, we made one last stop at a local factory that manufactured and bottled fruit beverages. With the factory's manager as our guide, we watched the entire process from start to finish, from the fermenting and straining of the fruits, to their bottling and labeling and preparation for shipment. We, of course, could not and would not leave without sampling some of these delicious beverages, and they did not disappoint. By the time we reached the Marriott, it was nearly midnight, 15 hours after our journey to Tavush province began. A long day to be sure, but a day full of cherished memories. Tuesday, September 21st, was Independence Day in Armenia. There would be plenty of partying later that day. Some of that partying would no doubt involve a product that we were going to learn more about and also taste. The Noi Brandy Factory has been around in one form or another since the late 19th century. Our guide took us through the history of the plant, from its beginnings under another name, to describing how the brandy or cognac is manufactured and stored today. On the lower level, we saw the barrels that stored the liquor and were even allowed to enter what had once been a secret passageway. But to be honest, the smell in there was so strong I could only stay for a few seconds. Then, for most of us, the highlight of the visit. It began with a tasting of some vintage wine dating back to 1944. We then went over and sat down to enjoy what the Noi Brandy Company is most famous for. Our guide described what to observe in terms of color and texture and, of course, the smell, all before the liquid even touches your lips. We tasted both a 5- and 10-year-old brandy, and the consensus was that the 10-year-old brandy was smoother. Genatsit! That evening, some of us gathered at the Marriott's La Cucina restaurant. An incredible spread was prepared for us with an upper floor view of Republic Square. Outside, the cafe was packed with guests who wanted a good seat for all the festivities. 
A few of us did go outside for an even closer look. The celebration was not without controversy, but on this night, it was time to mark Armenia's 30th year as a republic. And we in the Knights and Daughters of Vartan, with our friends, were there to see it. The next morning, as the scaffolding was already being removed from Republic Square, and before doing any sightseeing, we went to the bank. An interactive discussion of Armenia's banking industry hosted by Armekanam Bank at their Armenian Street headquarters. Following an initial presentation on the current state of Armenia's economy and banking structure, the event was opened up for questions, and there were plenty of questions and comments on a variety of topics investing, real estate, the stock market, and many others. Whether you are a financial expert or someone who is just interested in learning about what makes Armenia's economy tick, it was a fascinating and informative discussion. Our trip to the bank now over, we were off to Aragatsan province and the 13th century monastery known as Sakhmosavank. According to legend, the church was founded by Krikor Lusavarich, or St. Gregory the Illuminator. The architecture of the church was considered unique for its day. Inside, the tranquility and beauty of the sanctuary tugged at the heart so did the incredible view only a few steps away. The church is located on the right bank of the Hazak River, at the edge of a long, deep gorge that stretches for several miles. Some refer to it as Armenia's Grand Canyon, and grand it is, a place for prayer and private thoughts. Hey, do you know the Armenian alphabet? Can you write your name in Armenian? But whether you can or cannot, you want to visit the Armenian Alphabet Monument in Artashavan. And we did. I've never seen anything like this. Throughout the area, there are hand-carved letters representing the entire 38-letter Armenian alphabet, as created by Mesrob Mashtots. As you might expect, we had some fun standing in front of the first letter of our respective names. There is mine while the others each found their chosen letter, which of course makes a great backdrop for a photo. Now all of this walking around can certainly build up an appetite, and we were in for a treat. We visited the home of Nakin Didui Anahit Ananyan and her husband Ash. The home itself was stunningly beautiful. The yard itself is adorned with flowers, a water fountain, and four Christmas trees, each planted by one of Nakin Didui Anahit's grandchildren. Her husband, Ash, was busy grilling all sorts of delectable delights. It was a spectacular meal. Here was my portion. Okay, I'm kidding, but it was fantastic. After some toasts and conversation, the ladies went inside while the gentlemen remained on the patio. But soon, it was time to say so long and thank you for a wonderful visit. Our next stop was a sports school which had undergone some recent renovations thanks to Gomitas Talij. After the traditional bread and salt welcoming ceremony and a group photo with the young athletes, we went inside where we were first shown photographs of what the school had looked like before the renovation work had begun. As we walked from room to room, we saw the students practicing their craft. The young boxers were hard at work, both using the bag and sparring with their classmates under the watchful eye of their teacher. When they weren't jabbing with their right or their left, they were climbing quickly up the rope. Now, I was a fast rope climber back in high school, but when I tried to climb the rope that afternoon, let's just say I realized just how long ago high school was. After my feeble attempt, some of the younger students crowded around me as if to say, Don't worry, Pop. We've got this covered. They sure had it covered when it came to lifting weights. The young athletes were taught the proper technique, and they knew exactly what they were doing, and they looked great doing it. They were so talented, 
and so were the wrestlers who took down their opponents with the skill and patience taught them by their instructors. Perhaps kickboxing and martial arts are more your cup of tea. Well, they have that too, and the dedication of these young men was just as impressive. The sports school has a bright future ahead, with young athletes whose dedication inspired us all. That evening, we dressed up and walked around the corner from the Marriott to the courtyard next to the Jivan restaurant. We were to be guests at the Miss Armenia competition for the Miss Universe pageant. Our own spotabed Tikran Sahakian was a major sponsor of the event, and he was thanked for his generosity. A member of our group this week, Ruzana Taranik, who has participated herself in numerous pageants, served as one of the judges. Following a film detailing preparations for the competition, there were words of welcome from the chairwoman of the event, Miss Armenia of 1998, Gohar Haratunyan. We all watched with anticipation as the contestants walked across the stage, answered questions, and then waited as the judges made their decision. We cheered, not only for the winners, but for all the contestants who worked so very hard and gave so much of themselves in hopes of representing Armenia to the rest of the world. In that sense, they were all winners, and so were we, for having the pleasure of honoring them. On Thursday, we made the pilgrimage to Tsitsir Nakabert, the Armenian Genocide Memorial, to honor the one and a half million who died at the hands of the Ottoman Turks during the first genocide of the 20th century. But before going to the memorial itself, we walked the short distance to the small tree that had been planted by the Knights and Daughters of Vartan in 2018, during Veratat's Heidenik III. After Avak Spadabed Stephen Adams poured water on the growing tree, some of our other friends asked to do the same. There was a wall nearby, which had engraved into it the names of the cities and villages where Armenians lived before the genocide. Avak Sparabed Steve and Nakin Didui Salpi stood before the names of their respective families' ancestral homes, Harpert and Musale. I was then given the honor of carrying a wreath on behalf of the Knights and Daughters of Vartan to the memorial itself. It was a tremendous honor for me to do so, and I only wished my parents had been there to see me. difficult to describe the feeling of standing here, before this eternal flame. I thought of my other family members who have been here, my maternal grandfather, himself a genocide survivor, my parents of course, and my other family members, who came here during our visit in 2011. The impact of this place is still just as powerful. We stood in silence and paid our respects, not only to those who died in the Armenian Genocide, but to those who survived, our parents, grandparents, and great-grandparents, who lived to begin new lives in Armenia and throughout the world. From the Genocide Memorial, we journeyed even farther into Armenia's past by visiting the Erebuni Fortress and Museum. The fortress itself dates back to the 8th century BC and was founded by Argishti I, the king of what was then known as Uratu. Artifacts from that era can be seen inside the adjoining museum, including a model of the original fortress, and scores of items that were discovered during the archaeological excavations at the fortress, which are still ongoing. One of the archaeologists was kind enough to serve as our tour guide that day, answering our questions and reading from the original cuneiform writing the words of King Argishti I. By the greatness of the god, Haldi, Argishti, son of Menua, built this mighty stronghold and proclaimed it Erebuni for the glory of Uratu and to instill fear among the king's enemies. The ruins of the fortress itself 
stand atop a hill known as Arinbert, among the highest points in all of present-day Yerevan. The view from the fortress is breathtaking, but being there, standing on this focal point of Armenia's history, was something not to be missed. Being there was also inspiring, giving our friend Artbik the opportunity to fulfill a lifelong dream of dancing on an Armenian mountain. Our day of reflection and remembrance would end by honoring the revered artist Lusig Aguletsi. We visited her home, which now, just a few years after her passing, is also a museum and an art cafe. I had never seen anything like it. We enjoyed an amazing meal amidst incredible artwork covering many genres. She did it all, and she did it well. We broke into three groups, and off we went on our respective tours. Lusig Anguletsi was an amazing woman who, in her lifetime, helped preserve, through her art and her private collection, more than a thousand different elements of Armenian culture. As an artist, her work included a diverse resume of paintings, photographs, many of herself in the traditional Armenian costumes that became her trademark. And, speaking of costumes, she made hundreds of them many of them using this sewing machine. And it wasn't just the costumes, but the accessories, the belts, and the jewelry. Our friend Ruzana showcased some of the jewelry inspired by the artist, and along with her daughter Liliana and Nakin Didui Salpi, modeled some hats, designed, of course, by Lusik herself. Lusik Aguletsi also made figures of every size and description and she collected historical artifacts. These date back nearly 2,000 years. Many of us commented that night that it felt more like the artist had just stepped out for a short time and that she would return. But thanks to her inspiring art and the museum and cafe which houses her life's work, a part of Lucy Aguletsi will always be here. Friday was a day to be inspired by the young people of Armenia, and this morning it was the students of Knights of Vartan School 106. When we arrived, we were met by our friend, Principal Marine Vardanyan. She led us inside, where we were given a short tour of the building, which looked marvelous following some needed renovations. The lobby, where students enter each morning, was filled with the sounds of birds and other animals. On display, student artwork paying homage to Armenia's military and a tribute to those alumni who made the supreme sacrifice for their country. Avax Barabed Stephen Adams and Liaison Koharpalyan pointed out familiar faces in the many photographs that adorn the wall. After a few group photos, we were brought into the school's auditorium which had recently been renovated with the support of Nadek Shavashan Talish. We were then treated to a very special performance, a play entitled The Last Teacher, featuring a cast of both students and faculty. The drama centered around an alleged event in a classroom and how its aftermath helped forge a bond between a teacher and his students. It was extremely well done and well received. After the performance, Avax Barabed Steve presented Principal Vardanyan with a donation, as well as a copy of the Avaraid, which featured an article about Knights of Vartan School 106. This was followed by even more gifts and accolades, as well as refreshments. There was a dramatic student recitation. Our group also had the chance to thank Principal Vardanyan for her welcome, and also to express our gratitude to members of the cast. Our day to be inspired continued for our next stop was the House of Hope. Mir Huis is a place that provides hope, opportunity, and a healthy social environment for young women who are at risk. The caring and dedicated staff work closely with the young residents, providing educational and psychological support, but just as important, the young women who live here in this family environment prepare themselves for adulthood. One talented resident serenaded us with a song, while another played a classical piece on the piano. 
Nachkin Abak's Barabed Stephen Karajan presented each young lady with a copy of Find the Word, a book of word games prepared by his wife, Nachkin Abak Didui Lisa Karajan. Abak's Barabed Stephen Adams presented the staff with a donation and an article about Merhuis that appeared in the Avarite. Before we said goodbye, we enjoyed some tasty fried dough prepared by the girls themselves. Our final weekend together began with some pretty amazing sights, beginning with our first clear view of the mountains of Ararat. It is always an impressive and inspiring sight to behold. Our liaison, Kohar Palyan, had an even better view back in 2013 when she climbed Mount Ararat as part of a group. After the breathtaking view of Ararat that we all had, we were off to the monastery at Gerhardt. Being there, like so many other places in Armenia, is like stepping back in time. Yes, there is a walk to reach the monastery itself, but it is well worth every step. Along the way, there are hachkars and crosses, both near and far. The main church was built in 1215, and like so many churches of this kind, it allows light in through its dome. After admiring the beautiful altar, my mind went back to my 2011 visit here, and how my mother, Nakin Didui Eva Medzorian, sang the Heidmer, or Lord's Prayer, inside this sanctuary, with its incredible acoustics. A friend who knew about what my mother had done asked me to do the same. Spadabed Stephen Adams, a deacon at St. Paul's Armenian Church in Fresno, then shared Dervormia, Lord have mercy, with us. We lit candles for our loved ones and touched the holy water that ran through the church. From Gerhardt, it was a short drive to the Garni Temple, the only Greco-Roman structure still standing anywhere in the former Soviet Union. It's also the most well-known symbol of pre-Christian Armenia. You might say to yourself, wow, that temple is really well-preserved considering it was built in the first century AD. Well, Actually, the temple was destroyed by an earthquake in 1679 and was only partially reconstructed about 50 years ago, using both the original as well as new masonry. Of course, there's no better way to see just how sizable this temple is than by climbing its stairs, and don't be fooled, those are long steps, then extending your arms between the massive pillars. It also makes for a great photo, as you can see. From the very old to the very new, we stayed in Garni village and went to the soon-to-be-completed home of the Sarabekyan family. Parents Arsen and Anahid and their three children will soon move into this house, being built for them through the combined support of the Knights of Vartan and the Fuller Center for Housing, Armenia. For the last several years, the now family of five has lived inside this metal container with its limited space and lack of privacy. When we went in to see the family's current living space for ourselves, Liaison Koharpalian and I made a new friend, the Sarabekian's delightful six-year-old son, Armin. Don't worry, buddy. I've never been able to figure out that Rubik's Cube either. It was a very special day for both the family and for us, for we were there for what would be the very first meal to be enjoyed in the Sarabekian's new home. 
It was a wonderful afternoon, with great food, plenty of toasts, but most important, the satisfaction of knowing that this loving family would soon be starting a new life in their new home. Hajogutun to the Sarabekian family, and thank you for letting us come to visit. Another outdoor marvel was waiting for us in Kotaik province, one of the most beautiful natural monuments in all of Armenia. The Symphony of Stones at Garni Gorge, thought to have been created through the collapse of volcanic rock. Some have said that the stones even resemble the pipes of an organ. It is stunning to see and, yes, you guessed it, it makes for a really terrific background for a photo. Last stop on the way back to Yerevan, the studio of New York-based artist Tikran Tsitsokzian. The exhibit, entitled Self-Isolation, opened in 2020. Sunday would mark the end of our Veratats Heidenik. Some of us began this warm sunny day by walking to nearby St. Gregory's Armenian Church. We took the scenic route to get there, but it was such a nice day that no one minded. The church itself was a sight to behold, even from a distance. Standing near the main entrance, another stunning view of Mount Ararat. Inside, as the Divine Liturgy or Holy Badarak was celebrated, I stood with Avak Spadabed Stephen Adams. As a deacon in his Armenian church in California, and as a former Sunday school teacher and choir member at my church in Boston, the two of us stood there, reciting the prayers and singing the shadagans we knew so well. Vera Tat's Heidenik 5 officially came to an end that evening, as we all joined together at the Mergarian Carpet Factory for a gala banquet. It began with a special guided factory tour for the Knights and Daughters of Vartan. We saw the carpet manufacturing process from start to finish, beginning with the dyes used to color the fabric to the actual weaving of the carpet. A reception was held for us which included a presentation by the Armenian Artists Project. Works of art by various artists were on display. One of the talented artists was there that night, creating a beautiful piece right before our eyes. There were old and new friends who were there at the gala to celebrate this night with us. Men and women who have worked with the Knights and Daughters of Vartan, helping us to fulfill our mission in Armenia. After a delicious dinner, Liaison Koharpalian introduced Principal Marine Vardanyan of Knights of Vartan School 106. She then introduced her students, who entertained us with an incredible array of songs and dances.
In his remarks, Avaxpadebed Stephen Adams said the mission of the Knights and Daughters of Vartan was more important now than ever, and that we couldn't do what we came to Armenia to do without the help and support of our brothers and sisters who live and work here. With help from our liaison, Avaxpadebed thanked the people who contributed not only to the success of our trip to Armenia, but to the projects and institutions that have made a difference in the lives of so many. Veratat's Heidenik 5 was now over. But the nine days we spent together, the knights and daughters of Vartan and our friends, the places we visited, and the people whom we met, all of that will stay with us long after the view of Mount Ararat is gone from our sight. For me, it was an unforgettable experience. Even though I was nearly 6,000 miles from my own home, I still felt at home. Armenia does that to you. You become part of a large extended family when you visit here. I felt that everywhere I went during my month in Armenia. My parents were right. Armenia is a second home, and I can't wait to come back here. Of course, no trip would be as special as this one was without the people who made it so. I want to thank each of my fellow knights and daughters of Vartan who were with me on this pilgrimage, along with the many new friends who joined us, and who I hope will return next year as knights and daughters. To Avax Parabed Stephen Adams and his wife, Nakin Dirui Salpi, a very special thank you for all of their kindnesses, for the many breakfasts and conversations that we shared together, and most important, for their dedication and their love to and for the Knights and Daughters of Vartan. I can't tell you how proud I am to have gotten to know them better and to know them as friends. He had spent countless hours planning for this year's Veratats Heidenik, as he had the four previous visits. Spadebet Dikran Sahakyan headed up the committee that planned our visit to Armenia. His attention to detail, his hard work in choosing the locations we would visit, and his undying love for his homeland came through during every moment of our pilgrimage. Plus, he was just plain fun to be around. Spadebet Dikran was always there to lend a helping hand in whatever way he could. It would not have been the special trip that it was without him. Thank you, Spanabed Dikran. Long before any of us touched down at the airport in Yerevan, our liaison, Kohar Palian, was hard at work, making the arrangements in Armenia for our visit. Once we arrived, it was Kohar who made sure that we had all the information that we needed, from schedules to the best ways and locations to exchange money, and so much more. She made sure that we were all on time and where we needed to be. She answered all of our questions, and most important, she did it all with a smile and made us all feel welcome. As Avak Spadebed Stephen Adams said himself, we would not have been here without her dedication and diligence. She was also a great help to me, both before and during the Veratats Heidenik. Thank you so much, Goa. It has been more than three months since I left Armenia, although I think about it every day. And even though I am back here in Boston, with my family, friends, and my work, a part of me, a part of my heart, never left. It is still there, and always will be. Armenia does that to you. My visit to Armenia lasted one month, but I found that you can never fully let go of it once you've been there walking through its hills and mountains or its crowded city streets, Armenia gets into your soul and stays there. How wonderful. I can't wait to go back. Thank you for letting me share my diary from the motherland with you. Thanks also to those friends who joined me on this trip who shared with me their photos and videos for this podcast. I am so grateful. I'm Asped David Benzori in Avadadat Lodge No. 1 in Boston. I hope to see you in Glendale, California this summer for our Grand Convocation and in Armenia this September for Veratats Heidenik 6. Until then, from Armenia, Shinoragalem Sireli Paregamnev.